Ron, thanks so much. Well, you don't have to tell most of us that sleep matters a lot. In fact, good sleep is essential to health and well-being, and there are simple things most people can do to improve their quality of sleep. So Dr. Craig Schwimmer is a nationally recognized expert on sleep, and he's here today to share some tips on how you can get a better night's sleep. Hello, Craig. How are you? I'm doing well. Okay, thanks. this is a big deal because sleep is important, but really break it down why that's so. Sleep is a, is a basic human need. Um, and we really require adequate restorative sleep in order to enjoy good health and, and to be well. Um, all sorts of bodily housekeeping occurs while we're asleep and the quality and quantity of our sleep meaningfully impacts everything that occurs in our waking lives. Okay, let's break it down what it impacts because uh, if we, don't, we think we're getting restorative sleep every night. <laughs> we think we're getting quality <laughs> sleep, but not all sleep is created equal. Right. So how much sleep are we needing? What are we talking? So it varies during the course of our lifetimes, but for adults, most of us really need close to eight hours of sleep per night. Okay. Um, but really the best way to judge whether or not you're getting enough sleep, it's really quite simple. If you wake up in the morning spontaneously, and you feel refreshed, you've gotten enough sleep. Okay. If you hit snooze three or four times, you need to take a shower, and you need a couple of cups of coffee to get your mind going, you just, you're not well rested. You haven't gotten enough sleep. <laughs> I think a lot of us fall into that second category. Sure. Well, yeah. look, you know, look, you know, how many coffee shops do you pass on the way to work? We are a chronically sleep deprived society, yeah. so we drink a lot of coffee. Because we're overextended. Okay, yeah. so what can we do now that we've realized this is a problem? What, what can we do to get a better night's sleep? You know, I think that really the most important first step is to acknowledge that sleep is important. Um, it's like anything else. If, if people will sort of reflect on it and say, hey, you know what? Sleep is not a luxury. It's not for the lazy. It's not, you know, something that I'll do later. Yeah. But it's really important and meaningful and will improve the rest of my life. That's the first step to getting better sleep. Yeah, because you have to give it that, that importance. If people say, I'll, I'll sleep when I'm dead, then yeah. they're, they're neg you know, negating. They'll die sooner. They'll die sooner, right. And then they're not on a regular sleep schedule either because they're not giving it yeah. its importance. So yeah. let's talk about the regular sleep schedule. So, you know, there are a number of really simple things that, that people can do that can meaningfully improve their sleep. And, and it's funny, when I think about it, I tell people, you know, those of us who, are, who have kids, the stuff that we do for our children to encourage better sleep, if we would simply do, do those things ourselves, yeah. we'd benefit immensely. So, you know, our kids get a regular bedtime. Why? Because our bodies love repetition and predictability and patterns. And so, going to bed at the same time every night, waking up at the same time every morning is really ideal okay. and, it, and it facilitates better sleep. Okay, that's a, good, that's a good point right there. Is there anything else we can do in that category? Sure. So what else do we do for our kids? We establish bedtime rituals, right? Yeah. Our children get a bath, a story, a kiss, good night. Mm -hmm. Those rituals can be very powerful and reinforce good sleep and make it easier to, to obtain good sleep. So, you know, for adults, do some light reading, some, some quiet stretching, have a cup of chamomile tea, take a warm shower, something enjoyable, relaxing, that you can do on a regular basis and it really helps your body and your mind realize, hey, it's time to transition from my multitasking, really crazy, overextended day yes. to this sort of blissful, tranquil world of sleep. You, you need that little transition, and a bedtime ritual can really powerfully do that. I like that, treating it kind of to say, like, you wouldn't give your child a big sugary snack or keep them up past right. their bedtime. You know that's a recipe for disaster. Why would we do that to ourselves? Exactly. Kind of, You kind of ease into it yes. with, a, with a repeatable, predictable ritual. Okay. Let's talk about just say no to caffeine. When do we stop the caffeine intake during the day? So caffeine is really a big problem for anybody who has any issues with sleep. Mm -hmm. Caffeine has a half-life of about six hours, so if you drink a cup of coffee at three o'clock in the afternoon, at nine o'clock that night, half of the caffeine is still in your bloodstream. Yikes. So I tell people, look, first of all, if you get enough sleep, you won't require as much caffeine. Okay. But certainly, limiting caffeine to before noon is a good idea for anybody with any sleep issues. Okay, that's all really good information. Get on a sleep schedule, get your body rested and well so that we can get to bed and get that good sleep schedule and give it its importance. Sleep is important. Absolutely. I'm going to go take a nap right now. Sound good? All right. <laughs> Thanks for all of these tips. And for more healthy sleep tips, go to snoringcenter.com. Over to you, Kate.